Hey everybody, in this video we're going to check out Playwright testing. Playwright's a modern JavaScript solution for writing end-to-end -end tests. It allows you to script user behavior like clicks or filling out form fields or scrolling or button taps and then play those scripts back against your UI. So if you've heard of things like Selenium testing or synthetic testing, uh, Cypress testing, this is the same idea, but kind of a new, fresh, performant take on it. So we're going to cover adding Playwright to a project, we're going to write some basic tests, we're going to learn how to use something called the Playwright Inspector to help us debug those tests. It's going to be a great time, so let's get started. So quick intro for our project today. What I have here is a new installation of a Next.js app. And it doesn't really matter that we're using Next here or React or anything. Playwright won't know or care. You can add Playwright to any web project because it's just going to run tests against your final result. So it really doesn't matter how it's built. So first, I'm going to install Playwright to our project. And so the command looks like this. npm install as a dev dependency Playwright slash test. You can just grab this straight from their documentation. Next, we need to install the actual browsers that Playwright uses. So, so far we only have the library. The library is going to reach for browser packages on your machine. And so we'll go ahead and install those now. The command for that is npx playwright install, again, straight from the docs. Now I already had the browsers installed. So for me, the command didn't do anything, but if it's your first time running it, you'll see them download here. Now let's take a quick look at the UI that we're actually going to be testing today. If I tab over here, here's the local Next project actually running. And so here for our first example, I have this really basic email signup form. It's just an uh, email text input and then a button that's disabled. The button should be disabled until you have a valid email entered here. So if I just say like test, that, that's not a valid email. So it's still disabled. But if I say at um, you know, mail.com or something, now the button is enabled. Now, this is a really basic example, but this kind of stuff comes up in real development all the time. Your project might have a lot of complicated forms and validations and different things that should happen and different interactions. By adding a test now, we kind of have some reassurance that everything still works like we expect. And if anything ever changes, the test will let us know. Back in our project here, let's go and add our first test. And so here, I'm going to make a new directory. It's going to be called tests. And in this test folder, I'm going to make a new file called example1.spec.js, and this is a naming convention. Using this convention will help Playwright find our tests. So first, I'm going to bring in some functions from the Playwright library. It looks like this. So we're going to bring in something called test and something called expect from Playwright test. That's the library that we installed. Next, I'm going to go ahead and set up a variable for the URL that we want Playwright to hit. Uh, so in our case, it's just going to be real simple. We're going to start with localhost 3000, that's the browser tab I just showed you. And then the example that we're looking at is example one. So this is a page in our app. If you have a staging environment or you want to run your tests against production or something like that, you totally can. It's just a matter of directing Playwright to whatever URL you want. Okay, so writing our first test, I'm going to use that test method that we're importing from Playwright. And first you give it a name or a kind of a string description of what you want the test to do. It's I guess it's called title. And so this one I'm going to say, um, you know, only valid email addresses can be submitted. Then we need to add the actual testing function. And so as a second param here, I'm going to say we're going to have an async function. It feels like most things in Playwright are asynchronous. And so by using the async keyword here, we can write our tests with async await. We'll see that more in a second. But here, uh, the Playwright library gives us an instance of a page. And we're going to use that too. So first we need to visit our URL where our UI lives. So I'll say, oh wait, page dot go to, that's a playwright method. And then we're going to pass in our URL. That's what we defined up here. Now it's going to take some time to visit this URL and load it up and, and be ready to actually search the page for UI elements that we're going to run our tests and assertions against. And that's why we use the await uh, keyword here. So as soon as this is done, now we can look for something on the page. So I'm going to look for that button. So I'm going to say const submit button is going to be a page.locator. Now locator here is a playwright uh, method or a method on page here. And it's kind of like query selecting in a live DOM. Uh, it's a little bit different. It's got a few more superpowers than that. But basically, this is how you find things on the page. And then once we find elements, we can fire off some interactions on them. So first, I'm, I'm looking for that submit button. But I'm going to start with like a really naive selector. This is just button with any type of submit. Now this should work okay for us at the moment because our page is so simple and only has one button type submit on it. But in a real project, this probably wouldn't work out so well because you may have many button type submits on the page. Uh, this is not a very specific selector. And so we're gonna refactor that in a second. But for now, let's go on and continue and just see it working. 
Now, initially here, I just want to find this button and make sure that it's disabled by default, because when the page loads, I expect it to be disabled. So to do that, we're going to say um, await, expect that submit button. Uh, so expect is what we're pulling in from the library here, and it's asynchronous, so it, it takes some time, and that's why we need to put await in front of it. I'm going to chain on a method. If you just set the period, you can see all the stuff that Playwright will suggest for you in the autocomplete. Um, there's like all kinds of different assertions you could run on any value that you'd have in the first part of expect here. The one I'm looking for is uh, that this button is disabled. So we'll find it here and run it like this. Now let's actually run this test. So I've got a terminal pulled up here. I'm going to go ahead and run the command to launch the Playwright test. And that's going to look like npx Playwright test. Fire this off. And you can see it passes. Now under the hood, this launched an instance of Chromium on my machine and did all the, the steps that we asked it to do, right? So it went to the URL, it found the button, and then it um, you know, made sure that it was disabled. It found that it was disabled, and so it returned true, like the, the test passed. It also did it very, very fast, which is really nice, really cool. By nature, this type of testing can be really slow because of the overhead of bringing up a browser and all the stuff that can go wrong in that process. Playwright does it really fast. Now let's say I want to run that test again, but this time I want to actually see Playwright do its thing. Before it happened all on the terminal, I, I didn't have to look at it or watch it, I just kind of trust that it happened. But say I want to watch the action go down. I could take the same command, npx playwright test, and add this dash dash headed to it. And at the very beginning, I can prepend this little bit here. It's pw debug equals one in space. So here's the whole thing, pw debug equals one, npx playwright test, dash dash headed, that's a mouthful, we'll fix that in a second. If I run this, some magic happens and I get something called the Playwright Inspector appearing on my screen. This is by far one of my favorite parts of Playwright where sometimes if you have a really complicated test or lots of them and something's going weird with them or something, you can use this tool to debug what's happening. Now the test is launched and it's parked right here on this await page go to URL. We've got some different buttons here we can press. So this play button here, this first one, will just go ahead and execute the code without stopping just like the, the terminal did before. If you're trying to get granular and really go step by step with what's happening in your test, you can use this button here. This is the uh, step button or step over. And so when I click it, it's going to just execute this step and then move on and then stop at the next asynchronous step. So I'll click it once. You can see that it loaded the URL and now we're parked here. I can even highlight, you see that it's trying to uh, find the button here. The inspector is telling me like, oh, I found it. Here it is. I highlighted it. Next, the debugger is parked here. And so I can go ahead and finish it off. And it, you know, it's going to run this check on this disabled. It looks disabled to me, so I think it's going to pass. We see the little check mark here in the console. And then we see the browser's ready to close. So I can click it one more time. And everything passed. Now let's do this again, but we'll intentionally make it fail this time. So instead of being disabled, uh, we know it's disabled. Let's say it's enabled, which isn't right, but let's just see what happens. So I'll come down here, rerun that same command. I'll start clicking through the test. And so you can see here that Playwright spent some time waiting here for that button to be enabled. And eventually we hit the timeout period where it never became enabled. And so Playwright gave up. If you look through the logs here, it'll even kind of tell you all the stuff that went wrong in the process. Here's the timeout. You can configure that to be whatever you want. But this is kind of nice if you're waiting for something to happen and it never actually happens. That's a good time for Playwright to just give up. So back in our code here, how can we make that button be enabled? Well, we know from before, all we got to do is enter a valid email address. And so let's have Playwright do that. So what I'm going to do is make another page locator. And this time, I'm going to use a different Playwright method on page. It's going to be called page.fill. This is kind of a shortcut for filling in input fields on the page. Uh, so first, we're going to select our input. And that's just going to be, um, again, we'll use a naive one. And we'll talk about selecting things in more depth in a second. So we'll say type is email. That's going to find that email field. And since we're using fill here, we also need to pass a value that we want to fill into that element, like what we want Playwright to type. So I'll say test at whatsup.com. Now this is also asynchronous, and so it's important that we put the await keyword here. If you forget to do that, you'll see that the test will just kind of bulldoze through that command, and then it'll cause problems, eventually giving you false negatives, false positives. A lot of stuff can go wrong, so it's important to remember that. Now here we expect as soon as the email field has this valid value in it, the button should be enabled. So let's run the test again, stepping through it. 
step. So it found the input. Now it's going to fill it with that value step. There it is. Now the button is enabled and the test passes. Now let's revisit some of the selecting that we're doing real quick and kind of talk about the spirit of Playwright. Here's our UI again. Notice that the uh, submit button is just a button that says submit. If I were sitting next to an end user and kind of guiding them through the application, kind of like what we're doing with Playwright, I probably wouldn't say, hey, find the button tag with type submit and click it. I'd probably say something more like click submit. It's a little more human, natural, friendly that way. And then also, you know, in the future, if our implementation changes and we don't have a button tag anymore, maybe um, it's some other kind of UI element, but it still says submit, then that test could still pass because I'm still just saying, hey, click submit. Playwright offers syntax for that. Let's take a look. Here, this button, instead of saying button type submit, that's a very like HTML DOM savvy way of doing it. I just want to say text equals submit. So in other words, find something on the page where the text is just submit. Let's test that that still works. Cool. And now let's talk about this email field. Now, like I mentioned before, we might have a bunch of email inputs on the page. And so this selector is not very robust because if Playwright suddenly finds a different one, this whole test is not going to work right. Instead, we want to provide a pretty specific ID for the exact input that we're looking for. And so we could change this, you know, it's just, you know, it's just a selector. So we could change it to be like a regular DOM ID, like say, you know, email input. Now in theory, this would work totally fine because it's just a selector. It's going to find the right element and, and work as you expect. Uh, but a convention you'll see around, which I really like is to actually, instead of using explicit IDs, like regular element IDs, you use something called a data test ID. So we'll say data test ID. This is sort of like an indicator that some kind of test is going to look for this element. So if you're tweaking things, changing things, moving things around, and you end up moving test IDs, you can probably be confident that some test is going to be looking for what you just moved around. So let's go ahead and make sure that our UI actually has this. So we'll say example on the input field, we'll say test ID is going to be equal to email input. Now if I come back and run the tests, everything still passes. So what we've covered so far are the basics, but solid fundamentals for adding tests to your web app or your game, your web project. There are other pretty cool things you can do with Playwright, like mocking out API responses and stubbing authenticated credentials. So say you have UI that you can only access if you're logged into an account. A fresh browser is not going to be able to hit that, so how can you stub those credentials? Playwright has a really cool solution for that. If you're interested in hearing more about those, just let me know in the comments below. If you like these videos, please be sure to like and subscribe uh, for more just like this. There's all kinds of new stuff on the way that really helps me out, so thank you so much. Also, check out our Discord server. We have a really cool community of people that are making and playing indie games, so if you're interested in being part of that, the link to that is in the description below. Thank you so much. I'll catch you next time.